Hello, my Facebook and YouTube friends. We are back again. Janine LaRue of LaRueless Cafe. And normally I have a little bouncing around where I'm joking about some things and being really upbeat. Today is going to be a much, much more serious conversation. I am certain that many of you who are out there listening and watching us right now, you probably have read about my beloved city one more time. And let me just say something about the beloved city. I've been a Trentonian for only 16 years. And if you know anything about urban areas, unless you've been here for at least 50, or at least your grandparents were raised here, or your great aunt or somebody, you're really not a Trentonian. So I get all of that, but I pay my property taxes on time, and I live in my home that I love, and I show up and show out. I am a Trentonian. And today we are going to speak out as a Trentonian. Now, there are a few things about me that I want to give some disclaimers. Some things you don't know, some things you do know. I'm going to tell you what you do know. I think you know that I am a woman. Most of you have known me as a female. You know that. Most of you know that I am black. If you don't know, there is a problem with your eyesight. I have some optometrists you can use. Um, I have already told you my credentials as a Trentonian. Some people watching this who have been born in Trenton will say, she's not a Trentonian. I am a Trentonian. Some of the things that you look at me and you may not know, I am a staunch supporter of this mayor. I'm one of the three co-chairs of his transition. I worked very, very hard to get him elected. And I'm a staunch supporter of Mayor Ree Gussior. And something else you look at me and you may not know, and I don't run from it, I am gay. I am a black, gay Trentonian who lives in the West Ward where Councilwoman Robin Vaughn represents. So with all of those credentials, what you did know and what you don't know and what you know now, I feel as though LaRulis Cafe has standing to talk about this. So let's talk about it. The first person, we have four guests on our show today, bringing them in two at a time. And ironically, the first two guests are, are going to be men and the second two guests are going to be women. And don't get caught up in the gender balance. It's just that those are the buckets that they play in. And I wanted them to come in in the areas where I believe they can really be most effective in this dialogue. Kristen. Hi, Kristen. thank you for having me on. Reno. He is the executive director of the Garden State Equality. And let me tell you something, Garden State Equality, I worked with them several years ago, very, very hard as a lobbyist to get marriage equality in the state of New Jersey. Christian has been on the trail for um, a lot of years. And when I look at his um, Facebook page and all of the folks he has, I mean, they're in the tens of the thousands. It is quite impressive. He is a married man. He is a married man to a service man. And he is one of my heroes who I absolutely love. So welcome, Christian. We can't wait to hear what you have to say. Our next guest is another gentleman who I just love and admire. Um, my goodness, he's brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. Brandon McCoy is the president of the New Jersey Policy Perspectives. Did mm -hmm. I mean Public out, public's not in there, right? No policy perspective, you got it. And let me tell you the, the great thing about this young man, and I say young man, I say it endearingly because once he starts uh, talking, trust me, he blows all of us out of the water. But the one thing about Brandon is that he too is a Trentonian. And uh, he hasn't been in Trenton for as long as I've been in Trenton, but I'm gonna tell you something, we are honored that he chose to come to Trenton, he and his wife, and I think you have a little one, right? Nah, we got a little dog. You're going to start, you're going to hear him uh, uh, barking in a few minutes, but yeah, probably. We're, we're, we're really glad that the two of you have agreed to enter this discussion. So let me just set it up, the framework a little bit. 
I got a text from a, uh, from a, a neighbor Saturday night and the text basically said, Janine, if our councilwoman said what I'm reading that she said, she's got to go. And I said, okay, what am I missing? And I went online and I found the article and I almost fell off of my bench when I saw the word pedophile and the accusation that one of the other council people uh, probably uses his mouth on the anatomy of, of, of the mayor. And I just got myself all bent out of shape and I was like, she's gotta go. I then got the tapes yesterday, got an opportunity to listen to the tapes. And as I listened to the tapes, I have to be honest to the viewers and to my guests. I did shed a tear because the tape, as I listened to it, I can't think of too much to say other than it was just sad. It was sad hearing my elected officials going at each other on an official phone call, not knowing that those conversations would one day be public, and now knowing that thousands of people in the state of New Jersey have clicked on the link and have heard what my elected officials sound like when dealing with each other. Now, I will say this before we get in with the two guests. People have asked me, Janine, where do you stand on all of this? Number one, I believe that the councilwoman, for the sake of the city, should step down. However, I have known her up front for the little bit of time she's been involved in public office and public service. Never met her along the trail in the other 14 years I've been here. But for the last two years, I have known her up close. And I do know that the rant I heard on the call from her is not abnormal. It's not an outlier. And I do know that people have spoken with her in the past, even in public meetings when we didn't have to do our social distancing. And pretty much, I don't think she really cares how people perceive her. And I don't think she cares what people think of the language that she uses. So she's not going to step down. So I'm gonna start off the show by saying to her, Councilwoman Robin Vaughn, since I know you probably will not step down, would you please just step up and give an apology to the mayor, to your council colleague, who you almost called his mother a whore, and to the constituents who really were proud to see such a learned African-American woman run for office and we thought you would be different. So if you won't step down, which you should, I hope you will step up and apologize for that unremarkable, crazy performance that you did Saturday on that call. The sex, second portion I wanna deal with, and then we'll get to the guest, the behavior of the other people on the call. My mayor, I am a supporter of my mayor. I was gonna bring him on the show, but I know he has to get ready for his meeting at five o'clock. I did say to him that I thought maybe he should consider an apology. We talked about it a bit. I talked with his chief of staff and then I got the word back he was going to write an apology. Now, why would the mayor have to apologize? Well, he did call her an idiot and radioactive before she was able to respond to a question that she actually had decided she wasn't going to respond to anyway. Now, he's the mayor. We expect more out of our leaders. We don't expect him. He did suggest she needed a lobotomy. Well, that's a sexist term to me. So I was very annoyed about that. So I did get a copy of the mayor's apology and I did communicate with the chief of staff after he sent it to me. I am not going to read it. I viewed it as a non-apology. I am a supporter of this mayor. 
That apology was all about Councilwoman Vaughn. We already know about her. We already know what she's done. We want to know how the mayor feels about what happened on the call on Saturday and what does he want to say to his constituents. So we're waiting, we'll give him another shot at that. Finally, I don't know Councilman Harrison very well. I will get to know him much better after hearing some of his comments on the line. I appreciated the fact that he tried to come to the mayor's defense. I appreciated the fact that he tried to take the high ground initially and ask the councilwoman to please kind of calm down after she started throwing things. And then even when she played the mama game and talked about his mother, he still tried to take the high road. Councilman Harrison, where you failed, and it was a failure as far as I'm concerned for a black woman, you did say you're ugly. I don't know if the councilwoman had been a white woman, or I don't know if the councilwoman had been a white councilman or a black male councilman, if you would have called her ugly. Now, most of us who have seen photos of Robin, I happen to know her up close. She is absolutely beautiful to look at. So she's not ugly. So there's got to be something that made you call her ugly. Please, sir, don't ever call another black woman ugly ever again. No matter how you, def you define beauty, don't ever do that again. So I'm over my rant. So now, Kirsten, you are our leader in the gay community. Tell me how all of this affected you. Well, I think I think you're you're spot on with um, all the different elements that took place on this uh, in this meeting the other night, um, and uh, I, I commend you for speaking uh, out about this because often, uh, whether it's men speaking to women this way or heterosexual individuals speaking to LGBTQ people with slurs, it doesn't get talked about. Uh, and it doesn't get addressed. And that's why so many LGBTQ people stay in the closet um, because they don't feel comfortable in spaces. So thank you for having this conversation and, and bringing light to it and also communicating with the members of that meeting to ensure that uh, apologies are issued and to let them know uh, whether or not it would be appropriate to resign. Um, I think it, it speaks words that uh, someone from her district is having this conversation and the leader such as yourself in the women community and in the LGBTQ community is very powerful. So thank you. Um, as far as con uh, Councilwoman Vaughn, I, I do believe that she is unfit to serve the people of Trent and there's no need to uh, parse words here for her hateful anti-LGBTQ language and defending anti-Semitic slurs in the past that others have made. Uh, this isn't her first time at the rodeo. Uh, we know who she is. She has a history of uh, attacking different communities. And so I do believe she must resign. We need to uh, expect better from elected officials. Elected officials are uh, should be the representatives of the best in our world. Uh, in many cases, young people and adults alike look to elected officials for leadership and what is uh, proper way, ways to engage in a, in a democracy and um, what took place at that meeting is unacceptable. I do agree that uh, the mayor's uh, language was not acceptable as well. And that's why I support your asking him to issue an apology. But the, while the language and decorum on all sides lack decency, um, the reality is that the word idiot is not a slur. And the things that the councilwoman said that I won't repeat on this call, and to be quite frankly, I don't like to be engaged in conversations where these words are used. Those are slurs against LGBTQ people. Um, and we, we, we all know that it's inappropriate. Uh, we all know that these words have been used against the LGBT community for decades. 
uh, for decades. And that's why so many LGBTQ people um, don't come out of the closet before running for office. That's why we don't have any openly LGBTQ legislators in the state right now, because in a lot of ways, their sexual orientation and gender identity are used against them when they run for office. Um, and I know that we have a, another LGBTQ ally and pioneer on the call uh, that will be coming on soon, Senator Loretta Weinberg. But folks like said the Senator are few and far between. Uh, she has spent a good portion of her life advocating for the LGBTQ community in the political world and in, in the public space. And unfortunately, there's not that many allies that have made it acceptable for people to run for office. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Thank you for that, Christian. And you're, you're absolutely right. And one of the things I also want to point out to our viewers, um, we have three statewide, two of our federal legislators and um, our governor, the governor, Senators Menendez and um, Cory Booker have all three called for the resignation of Robin Vaughn. And some people may get a little upset about that, that they have called for her resignation. I think they were right to do it. I also think that we're all realists and we're not going to spend um, weeks and months of trying to get her out of office. Robin Vaughn does not care that people don't like the, le the language that she used on that call. Uh, when the um, issue came up about saying that one of the lawyers where a, a client was jewing down um, the city, Robin stepped to the plate and defended the terminology of saying someone can be jewed down because she said being jewed down is a verb. So she didn't care. And I just think that when you have an elected official who does not care that much, then they should become what I am, uh, a good little citizen uh, living our normal lives and don't try to represent a large group of people. The other thing I want to um, to point out is that both Senate Majority Leader Loretta Weinberg and our own Congresswoman in this district, Bonnie Watson Coleman, the two of them have stepped up and have repudiated this uh, conversation, um, have taken Robin to task for the name calling and the types of things she said on that call. So I wanted to point that out as well. So, hello there, Brandon. Hi. You are our policy guy. Tell me what you felt when you heard, first of all, when you read the um, news article and then when you listened to the audio. Uh, well, reading the article was uh, disappointing enough in its own right, uh, but the text does not do justice to the audio. Uh, and the audio was uh, incredible. And, you know, I've, um, well, I may look like I just graduated high school yesterday. I've helped a lot of folks get into office over the past decade plus. Uh, and you expect people to, when they're in positions of leadership, even if they think they're behind closed doors, even if they think they're having private conversations, to at least comport themselves in a manner that would bring pride to their constituents and to their city. And what I heard on the call was the exact opposite of that. And honestly, when you take this into account on top of the anti-Semitic remarks that you mentioned uh, previously, uh, as a resident of the city, and you know, I, I've, only I've only owned my home in the city for going on four years now. I used to live here when I uh, attended the College of New Jersey. So not a lifetime Trentonian by any stretch of the imagination, but I, I've, I've chosen to make a home here and make a life here. Uh, I am really getting past the point of being tired of having to defend my city uh, when such behavior is revealed in, in the news and in the public. And I think it's embarrassing, it's disappointing. Uh, I think the inability and the lack of interest in providing an apology for clearly offensive remarks is uh, also disappointing. It's something that uh, everybody should be able to apologize and have the capacity up to apologize and a uh, refusal to do so really uh, makes me question your leadership qualities and your character. 
Um, but beyond that, just considering the moment that we're in right now, not only as a world or as a country, but you know, the city of Trenton, which has had a lot of difficulty in the past, and that every single time that we start to get on our feet, uh, there's a recession or there's a downturn or some sort of crisis, and it's happening again right now. This is a really critical moment for this city. And they were on a call that was supposed to be about uh, the number of cases in the city, the number of coronavirus uh, cases in the city, uh, some updates on the situation uh, and how the city, the, the city should be responding to the moment. And the fact that they could not focus on that topic uh, really <laughs> is concerning. Uh, this is the moment when leaders really need to step up more than ever. Uh, this is a crisis that none of us have ever seen in our lives. Uh, it is a situation that is going to change the entire landscape of our country. It's going to be something that none of us ever forget. We've already lost so many lives uh, in such a short period of time. And for the behavior on that call to be what it was at this moment is unacceptable. And so uh, there was, in addition to some of the very uh, hateful and discriminatory remarks, there was a lot of talking down of organizations that are critical to the city of Trenton. There was talking down of the Trenton health team. There was talking down of Catholic charities and of Homefront, uh, calling them uh, do nothing organizations. And as somebody who runs a nonprofit myself, uh, let me tell you, it's not easy. And those are organizations that I'm sure could use a whole lot more support than what they're receiving in order to do the job that we hope they can do. And they're doing a job that honestly, if the city had a better fiscal situation and a better budget situation, which is not the fall of this mayor, he's only been in the seat for two, about two years now, you can't fix what's wrong with the city in two years. But if the city had a better budget situation, the city would be able to take control of those priorities more and have to rely on nonprofit organizations to provide those services. And so if anything, we should be supporting those nonprofits. We should be supporting the services that they are providing and we should be cheering them on because they are providing incredible work and doing a whole lot of difficult, difficult stuff in a very difficult time. And so I just heard a lot of negative talk on that call. I heard a lot of talking down the city and talking down uh, important institutions to the city. And it really is the last thing that I want to be hearing in this moment. And this is the last conversation that we as residents of this city should be having. We should not be forced to be having this conversation right now, but unfortunately we are. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, you have really been great in outlining what the issues are. Um, one of the things that I would ask the two of you, because I respect you so much, I, I do believe this is an opportunity for us to do better. And I am going to ask that the mayor, and I'm asking this publicly now, I will ask him one-on-one. -on -one. I'm sure he's a little PO'd with me because I didn't accept his apology, but I have two ex-husbands, I didn't accept their apologies either. So people are used to my not accepting apologies. Um, I'm gonna ask him to think about engaging the two of you and we also have the John S. Watson Institute over there at uh, Thomas Edison. We need to get some more folks engaged. We need, quite frankly, we need an intervention in Trenton. I mean, mm -hmm. I know that there is drama on a lot of councils throughout the state and really in a lot of our urban centers. But you know what? What's going on here in our city, uh, we've all had it. It's enough. So we will be reaching out to you and thank you so very much for uh, coming into the studio today. Uh, you feel free to hang around. If you do, I'll let everybody get a last shout out. Now we're going to bring in um, our wonderful Senate Majority Leader, Loretta Weinberg, and a former councilwoman in the West Ward of Trenton, a real veteran in this stuff, Annette Lartigue. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Hello. Hello, hello, oh, hello. Here we are. Here we are. So let me say one, one thing before um, you ladies talk, because uh, you guys always know what you're talking about. 
That's not what the kids say, Janine. I understand that the Larulis Cafe may be muted. Uh, if that's true, would someone just do a post on Larulis Cafe and say, move on over to Janine LaRue's page? I don't know if it's really muted or not. I haven't seen any complaints, but I have seen the uh, system itself is saying unmute Larulis. And I'm like, I can't. I don't know what you're talking about. So let's first talk about Senate Majority Leader Loretta Weinberg. You issued a statement. Uh, why would you in, uh, issue a statement? You're not from Trenton. So tell me about that. Well, <laughs> I'm not from Trenton, but as a member of the state legislature, Trenton is our capital city. I certainly spend some large portion of my time in Trenton. It's one of the premier cities in the state of New Jersey. And this is beyond Trenton. Uh, somebody who writes another newsletter sent me a, a tape and asked me to listen to it. And to be perfectly honest, Janine, I was really shocked at the entire tenor. And before I get to uh, the council member, uh, it was really to listen to this so-called call to uh, talk about the serious issues around COVID-19 and hear these council people all talking over each other and literally calling each other names. Uh, the mayor, who happens to be a friend of mine too, I served in the legislature with him. Uh, he, he not only called her an idiot, he called her several times a child which I consider even more of an anti-feminist remark. But having said that, by the time I got to her remarks, if I was not a little bit sickened, that drove me right over the line. Mm -hmm. I can't think of enough words to say that any elected official, any place in this state or indeed in this nation who can use phrases like that and language like that does not really belong in the public sector. This is a time for calm leadership, for discussing the issues around what is a major crisis in our lives. Jesus. And to have had that conversation degenerate the, the way it did was shocking, it was disgusting and I think we should all be speaking out about it. Thank you. Absolutely. Totally, totally agree. Um, and I have, I have some more questions that I want for you as well, uh, Majority Leader. But we're going to go to the former councilwoman. Um, you represented us so well here in the West Ward. Uh, when I bought my home here, Annette, you were my councilwoman. And I was so sorry to see you decide that you were going to move in another area. But I'm so glad that you came to the call today. I was surprised that you said yes. But I'm sure you must feel some kind of way as you watch what you've been watching over the last 48 hours. Let me just say this emphatically and without reservation when we value and respect diversity, we all benefit. As a heterosexual woman, a black woman who supports the lifestyle of anybody and their choice, and everybody has a choice, what happened on that call based on what I heard, my opinion is it was absolutely inappropriate and there are absolutely no winners that come out of this. None. They all owe the residents in the city of Trenton and apologies. Hopefully it'll never happen again. As a council, former councilwoman and an executive now, what I understand more than anything else is that there will always be discord whenever there's more than one person and there's a difference of opinion. How you handle that discord makes the difference. Many times, and I myself have been the victim of character assassination, and I know how difficult that is, especially as a black woman. But here's what I can tell you for sure. 
My parents taught me this. There's a difference between your reputation and your character. Your reputation is what others think of you. And that's why it's so important to always get the whole story, the whole pie, when you're accepting the pie. Your character is what you actually do. And with that being said, I think the display of behavior across the board was inappropriate and unacceptable. And any anti-gay, anti-Black, anti-Jew, anti-anything is inappropriate and inexcusable. And that is my position and that is my take. So having served the West Ward, I understand that the West Ward is a very diverse place. I am not calling for the resignation of any, I'm calling for better behavior of all. And that's where I am, Lady Laverne. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, what is the responsibility? Because you know, it can be tough being uh, an official. Um, I remember um, <laughs> Senator Loretta Weinberg. Uh, we have a former governor, he threatened to take a bat out and get you. <laughs> and, you know, when I saw that, and I think it was almost, it was live TV. It wasn't a news feed. He was in a press conference. And I remember when I saw it, I said, oh man, what is she going to say to him? And you know, we, we say this about Michelle Obama all the time, but it's real. When she said, when they take the low road, we take the high road. What did Absolutely. you do when, when Chris Christie said he's going to take a bat out for you? <laughs> well, actually the story around that i was i was getting on a plane uh going uh, getting ready to go to california and i was at that point when if those of you who remember plane rides when we used to be able to do it yeah. i was in the aisle dragging my luggage trying to get into my seat when i got a call from the newspaper reporter who uh said to me uh, do you feel uh threatened and I said, what are you talking about? I'm getting on an airplane. And it wasn't until about six hours later when I landed in L.A. that I actually got the story. I got off the plane and my daughter said to me, what did you do? <laughs> so by that time, it had grown into a rather large story. But, you know, I treated that. Uh, I didn't I didn't internalize it. <laughs> I, it didn't make me afraid of anything. And all it did was reflect very poorly on the governor, then governor himself. This, listening to that tape, and my initial reaction was mm. that it was so hard to listen to because of the whole, what, the whole atmosphere. This is such a serious time. And, and I can uh, identify with the former councilwoman, I'm a former councilwoman, and I still engage in the local politics of the community in which I live and work. So I know what it's like to serve on a local council. I know how personal things can get, Absolutely. but uh, things ha there are too many important issues to solve here that we are even spending this time discussing what took place in that phone call rather than what should have taken place, do we have enough protective gear for our first responders? Are we taking care of the people who are sick? Do we have enough testing sites? All the questions that come around this terrible crisis. To me, I, I mean, I, I can't tell you I had a real visceral reaction to the language, certainly to even at the beginning, uh, Janine, and when you first reached out to me, I think if you read my quote, I said that this was hard to listen to and there was a lot mm -hmm. of name calling on both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is, this is bad in and of itself. And at the, this time, these times, it is even worse. Absolutely. If, you'll pardon me, I'm going to digress for one minute. Mm -hmm. I was listening to your introduction of yourself about being a, as, as you and I know, we joke about it, a height, height challenged, right? But you are a black 
woman who is gay, I was thinking to myself, if only you were a lawyer, you would make the perfect Supreme Court appointee at this time. So if you can hurry up and get your law, <laughs> you uh -huh. you get your law degree, we're all behind you. Thank you so much. And you know, one of the you you brought something down home that we've got we can't let this go by. Such a controversial conversation with the lowest in the gutter form of speech to each other. You would think they were dealing with an issue in Trenton where you had folks protesters lined up on both sides fighting about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were dealing with how many people are infected yeah. with the virus? How many people are hospitalized? Are there folks who need food? Are there people who are being abused who need shelter? This is what the call was all about. And it ended up being a bar fight. How does that happen? So I just want to end up with just some words of advice from you two who are elected officials, one former and one current. Annette, what advice would you give to our officials? Because um, we all get a redo and hopefully they will think about this in about 45 minutes. Oh my goodness, they're all going to be in an official meeting with each other again. And I just hope that they will view this as an opportunity to figure out how to represent us better. Stop fighting. They need to stop fighting, get focused, and do the business of the people here in the city of Trenton. They owe everybody an apology in this city. The behavior was unacceptable, and it is embarrassing. It's embarrassing for me as a resident of this city, and they should all be embarrassed as well. The mayor, I supported the mayor in the runoff. At that time, I believe he was the best person for the job. He is a friend. I've known him for many, many years. However, there are times when you have to tell your friends some things are just not right. You got to take a look at yourself. And we all have to take a look at ourselves. But it begins right there. They were elected to serve the people in this city. How they feel about each other personally should be put aside. Madam? I can't add much to uh, what was just said, that it's time for them to stop it, to focus, remember what their responsibilities are and how much their responsibilities have grown because yes. of this crisis. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it'd be nice if everybody apologized, but I, I will tell you, I'm, re I'm really Sorry, I don't live in Trenton. I didn't call for anybody's resignation. I think that's up to the voters of the city of Trenton. But uh, I, I think that the lack of self-control yes. um, that was displayed most particularly uh, by Council Member Vaughn uh, is something that really needs a major apology and a major examination of how we're all supposed to behave. Believe me, I've been very angry at council meetings. Oh, I've been angry absolutely. sometimes, you know, <laughs> sitting on the floor of the legislature. Yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, sometimes when, if I'll watch something, or some debate I engaged in, and I think to myself, boy, I didn't sound half as angry as I felt <laughs> <laughs> while I was saying whatever I was saying. But, uh, you know- That's because you're a veteran. You know, I you know what you really want to do. The Why do you know how to control your temper? Yeah. Well, because we have a bigger responsibility. Much bigger. And um, we have a really any awesome, one of us. awesome responsibility right now. And I would hope that they start all, all out. I, I'm not even sure what a heartfelt apology would sound like in terms of coming from any of the participants here, but they have important business to do and they better calm down and get to it. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm going to bring um, Brandon back into the stream. Christian, I wanna thank each of you for joining this program today. Uh, your comments have been heard by a lot of people I've been watching 
the folks who have signed on. And I kick off to the conversation. Thank you very much. I'm going to make some final comments that will probably not win me a lot of friends, um, but it's okay. I'm gonna make the comments anyway. And when you have the mic, you can do that. Here is what I would say to my mayor and my council. Folks, get with the program. I used to say to my kids when they were younger, and I'm a former school teacher, so I support teachers. I know there are some wild teachers that do crazy things to our kids, but I would always let my kids know in the very beginning, if the teacher calls me and says you do something wrong, I'm gonna find out what the real story is first. So I don't wanna hear yes. any more from mayor and council. Well, he started it first. She started it first. Well, he said that, and he said this. It doesn't matter. You all were wrong. I can remember when I was in the car with my son many, many years ago, he was stopped by the police. And when they pulled us over, he said, but mom, I was going fast, but they, were, they went right past me. I said, but you were speeding too. It doesn't matter. Mayor and council, you were speeding too. I am begging you guys, try to work these things out for us. We are tired and 2022 is coming. The final thing I would say on this, I've been looking at the news feed and looking at people's posts and I noticed that we're even lining up on this issue by ethnicity. Blacks are standing behind Robin. They're not gonna let anybody do something to a black woman. And let me tell you, you see all the t-shirts with all the messages I, write, I wear? I hear you. But guess what? When we're wrong, we're wrong. And Robin is wrong. So we're not trying to pick on her. We want her to be the best representative she can be. And if she can't, she needs to get out of this business. Because there was no place for her at the table. So Larulis Cafe, thank you for coming in one more time and having a conversation. And here I am signing off with my crew. We thank you, every last one of you. Thank you. So you know what they look like. These are my buddies and the experts.